Okay, welcome back. Huh? Today is a little bit different. I'm going to share some things that happened uh, in these few days or even the past week. And I want to share with you all some of my thoughts. As the title suggests, the title is in Chinese, so I'm going to read in Chinese. After that, I'm going to translate the Chinese words for you all. For my English viewers, okay. So, 人生的两大悲哀，第一是结婚了不再恋爱，然后第二啊是毕业了不再学习。Okay, why 啊 ？Okay, we we translate first. Okay, one of the two biggest tragedy or biggest, ah,、uh, I think tragedy. Okay, biggest. If Malay ah, we sayang thing ah, the biggest sayang one ah is because if you get married already and you no longer in love with your spouse, you no longer pato, you know, no longer go out together because of the children, da da da, a lot of reasons. It's very sad. Okay, one of the biggest tragedy in life. Then the second tragedy in life ah, the、okay, pronunciation ah, is. After you graduate from school, you no longer put learning as something that is important. You forget about learning. You forget about trying to improve yourself. Okay, why do I call this, or why do I feel that this is something that is important? Ah, okay. Recently, ah,、uh, me and my wife, we were just ah、uh, walking past. Ah,、uh, I think was crossing the road. Ah, then we were holding hands. Ah, then my neighbor saw us and said, "Eh, you are 老夫老妻啊，还会牵手啊？" I and my husband have not been married. Then to me, that that sentence may may to her feels a little bit sad and、uh, something that is very common to a lot of、uh, couples that have been together for a long time.、Uh. But for me, I think that holding hands, you know, being together because we are a couple, ma. Even though we have two three children, oh, we are a couple, and it's perfectly normal to have the、uh, support from your spouse. You know, holding hands, and、uh, my spouse take care of me and stuff like that. So, I I feel that it's very normal, and in in fact, we are very loving in front of our children. Also, we want to give the children a very loving environment. That means, papa, mama, 相亲相爱 and then you know, we we I hug my children a lot, and I feel that children needs hug, especially when they're young. The amount of attention that you give your children also affects how they grow up as a as an adult. Oh, so I feel that that is that is important. Ah, but of course, sadly, not every couple after getting married stays the same. In fact, you can think back. Ah, if you are already newly wed, one two years after getting married, you got your kids. They're busy with your kids. Then you forgot about your wife. Okay, if you really do that to your spouse, please, please, please. Remember that before marriage, she is your girlfriend, okay, and you're very nice and very kind to her. But once the children come in, ah, oh, you become, you know, everything about the children. You forget about your wife. You forget her birthday. You forget to buy flowers for her anymore. I think the romance should not stop, ah,、uh, because life is very short, and our time that we have with our children, ah, will come to the end one. Once your children grow to twenty or twenty something years old, they will leave the family. Then you'll be with your wife for the rest of your life. What? So, who is the life companionship? It's your wife, right? It's your spouse. It is not your children. Your children will grow up. They will have their own family. They cannot stay with you forever. One. So don't forget that, ah,、uh, guys and girls. Okay. Then comes to the second tragedy of life. Once you graduate and you forget about learning, you stop learning. It is very very sad because why? Take take ourselves as an example. Renovation is a、uh, something that you have to learn almost consistently. Why? Because you have things coming in from different countries, from either the Western countries, from the Japan, from China. You got different things that's coming on, and because you got different ideas and different、um, new. Products, new ideas, new materials coming in. You got to consistently learn, and when you can consistently learn, you may 
find it very interesting to stay in this line. Now, this industry will be very fun. But when you stop and stagnate, then you may, whenever a customer bring a new item to you, a new video, a new TikTok video, and then you'll be like, I have never seen this before. I don't know how to build. Can you use something that we have seen before? It's quite sad uh, because you're not willing to learn. So to the industry players out there, I really hope that after seeing new things coming into the market from different countries, we take the opportunity, learn, explore, and even experiment on your own showroom or even your own home on the new products. Because the new products make sense. Some of them, they exist because there's a need. And then when the need is uh, fulfilled, the product will flourish. It will replace the old products. Example, epoxy grouting. In Chinese, we call it Meifeng. And Meifeng has many, many uh, different upgrades over the generation already. Now there's also items like Huang Yang Cai Sa. Oh, it's a kind of epoxy, but it is made uh, mixed with um, the color ground. So it can be changed, uh, so-called can be Kaoyan Se Jiazong. You can mix the color, you can adjust the color. So all these, all these things are new. Uh, it is not something that is predominant existence in Singapore. Does it take more effort and um, workmanship? Yes. Does it take more labor? Yes. But is it worth trying and learning about it? Yes also. So because if you do put yourself into the position where you're always learning, this industry is very fun. But when you are stagnated, then it becomes a mundane and everyday kind of thing. Okay. Then that's the two points I want to share today, but there are more things I want to share with you. So next one will be the time management. Time management. Uh, very sadly to say that because of the amount of work that we have and projects uh, and also customer meetings, I sometimes will prioritize the company's um, appointments over my own personal appointments. Like example, on Saturday, last Saturday, my friend had a opening for his shop, but I cannot attend because I'm going to have to serve three customers. So with that back-to-back -back, uh, customers to meet, I can't attend my friend's grand opening. It is a very sad thing. One. It's like, you know, even your kids also, my kids also, sometimes my kids uh, have performances. Then those performances are usually during working hours. Uh, because school is during working hours. Uh. I also miss a lot of this because... Um, the time that I have is very limited for myself or for my family or for my friends. So the closest to me understands because we give the priority to all our clients. And to the point that uh, I had this, um, I want to share with you a very personal story because that hurt me and hit me the hardest back in 2020, about 3-4 years back when my um, father was actually in ICU before he passed on uh, because of COVID. That time we kena the Delta wave, which was quite, uh, it was worse than Omicron. Uh, oh. So when we kena the Delta wave, my dad was in ICU. I remember the stats was that uh, the people that was in ICU was 17. One of them, the seven, one of the 17 was my father. So at that stage, I was uh, still juggling work. So I told one of my customers that, I have something on at home that I need to run to hospital back and forth because my dad is in ICU. I would need uh, to reply you later. I mean, it's not today, definitely not today. It will be some, some days later when I can get back to office and I can handle your, your technical questions. Then I think because of that delay, he was a little bit frustrated and then he started calling me. Okay, then I turned, of course, I, I uh, answered his call. And in the ICU, I turn the outside the ICU. ICU, we cannot cannot have phone. Uh, outside the ICU, uh, I answer the phone and I turn it to video. Video, we ask him, come, we turn on video call. Turn on video call, I did a selfie and then shooting myself and my dad in the ICU. I told him, I'm not lying to you. Uh, never ever I tell my clients anything, I will lie to them. Uh. But that hurt me, it hit me quite a bit because. It's like, wait some more, 
，我到达一个 level 的时候，我我已经跟 customer 讲，哎，我需要时间 ，I need time off， you know， and I need to handle this first。And then clients still become very, uh, what's that called, agitated and frustrated, and then still need to immediately hear my voice. 我觉得这是不对的哦 ，because um, every one of us we are humans. We have our personal life, and we have work as well. Uh, Reynolds Cup is work. Uh, it's my passion. I love what I do, but that doesn't mean that it can eat into my family life. Ah,、uh. if there's time that I need off, I will tell you all one. So. I hope that my customers can respect that I'm also human, and it hasn't happened、uh, very often, but it does happen sometimes. So when it does,、uh, it does hurt. And the good news I have for you is that I got two apprentices. You will see them. I don't think you will see them in the videos, but you will see them if you are my customers. You will be seeing them appear around me, and they are learning everything that I can teach to them. And these apprentices will free up my time, which is I can I can now give more attention to different customers because we have more team members, and that actually is one of the ways that we can reduce the stress on、uh, everyone, or not just myself but the whole team. So why we are keep why do we keep recruiting new people? Is because only with training, only with、uh, passing down skills, we can help. To serve more clients at the same time, and there's only one me. Okay, there's only one risk in in this in this Singapore. I don't know. There are other risks around, but there's not the same risk. So,、uh, the sad fact of life is that if everyone see me in front of the video and they need my direct attention at at any one point, I can only be there for one customer. But we have ten projects running at the same time, and each project takes about. Um, three months to finish. That means there's concurrently thirty projects that needs our attention. So it's a team effort. I hope you understand. Our team is always with you.、Uh, even you cannot reach me, my team is there, because every group chat has our drafters, our project managers, and even my apprentices inside.、Uh, slowly, I will add my apprentices in because I don't want to scare them. There's too many things going on. Give them some time. Let them have a chance to learn, and then from there, we hope to serve you to the max we can. Then, okay, some light-hearted, light-hearted stuff. Ah,、uh. uh, those that you live around Budok One, you may realize that there's a new, um, not so pricey Japanese ramen restaurant that opened. Okay, the 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 Japanese restaurant the slogan very funny one. I don't want to share the. I think after share the slogan, maybe you you know the the brand. Okay, let's share the slogan with you. Ah,、uh. the slogan is that.、Uh, Ramen for the average Singaporean. Wow, who think of such a marketing term? Ah,、uh? the slogan is horrible. No, ramen for the average Singaporean. Hey, wait, what if I'm not average? I go in here become average. Ah,、uh? so it's quite it's quite bad. Ah,、uh? okay. Um, of course the the ramen is cheap. Ah,、uh, six ninety for a bowl. Doesn't have much lah. You want to add things like um, I think six ninety is for two pieces of pork lah. Uh, with noodles and soup, so you have nothing else. You want spring onion? I think you need to add money. Ah,、uh, you want the other things like bean sprout. Every other thing you need to add money lah. So by the time you add, it actually adds up to about the same as other ramen restaurants. So if you are really a student or someone that I mean, if you are really that poor, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, or that average, you wouldn't eat ramen lah. You will go and eat bak chor mee lah. But so we give you more ingredients anyway. So, but the bad thing about the six ninety version, actually, I add a lot of things. I add, add until it's more than what other ramen shop sells already. Ah, I add until I add until about close to seventeen eighteen dollars. The bad thing is that the soup, because they sell it at six ninety, the soup is tasteless. Okay, I don't know how to cook until the soup is tasteless one. Ah, because. Even if you add a bit of pork bone inside, ah,、uh, or add some kind of ah、uh, stuffed chicken bone on this, ah,、uh, it won't be tasteless one, ah.、Uh. So it will be my final time. I won't be going back again. Okay, I'll be very honest with you. So, I think his marketing is totally wrong already. First thing he opened in a restaurant setting. Okay, so then the the price is low. The soup base is lousy. 
by the you say price is low is no it's low entry point but the fine you add everything you top up everything it will be the same as traditional uh, ramen shops so if you are going to charge you know 16 17 dollars after people top up already you better have a good soup base uh, because the ramen is about the soup uh. the noodles i don't want to say anything now uh, because once the soup is bad uh, i think everything my whole mind shut off already everything was bad already uh how the thing wait totally that one so his marketing, his positioning, everything is wrong. I don't know who go and advise this guy to go and open shop. It's very confusing to the customers because you are in a restaurant setting. You sell at six ninety for the basic, and the basic has nothing except for soup, noodles, and two pieces of pork. Um, so I'm a bit confused. after I eat finish already, I'm totally confused. What 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 can I find in the supermarket? I've eaten what supermarket? Right, so. Uh, okay, for, for my customers uh, that you all have been with me for a while already, I think I got shared before, F&B is one of the hardest uh, industry to thrive in Singapore. Why? Because we are spoiled for choices, right? We have hawker center, we have shopping center, we have restaurants, we have fast food, we have a lot of choices and you only have one chance. Like for example, this Japanese restaurant, even if you improve after this feedback, even if you improve, you suddenly see my video and then you decide to you know, increase your prices to make the soup better. It may be too late, too little, too late because I gave you one chance and I only will give you one chance. I won't be going back again. Or a lot of customers will not be going back again. So it's a very um, difficult market for you to thrive and it is really, very really hard to make a living in, in the F&B industry. So if you ever want to want to open shop, right? I will advise avoid a few industry, avoid F and B, avoid the pub, which is also considered as F and B, and avoid the those nights hearten, coffee bean, all these all these F and B small shops, whatever. Try not to. Um, in my previous video, I did explain before. Main thing, if you really want to calculate the maths, right? It's not difficult to calculate. I just give you a quick rundown. Uh. First thing, get your renter, the main overheads, huh? renter, your staff, salary, all this you calculate out, plus all the overheads, like your fixed expenses, like electricity, aircon, your water bill, everything you calculate. Then you realize that all this is actually very costly in Singapore. After that, you calculate per bowl, how much you can sell to make profit, and how much bowl you need to sell in order to cover all these overheads you realize that it's quite obscenely high in Singapore to survive. So that having said that, uh, it is not something for the faint-hearted. So this is a very quick tutorial on how to calculate overheads versus profits and stuff like that. If you really want to go into that, you need a pen and paper and you sit down and really, before you actually go into start a business, don't take your parents 200,000, 300,000 or more uh, to set up restaurant and then find out after six months that you're going to die. Okay, please don't do that. I can tell you that it will not be enough one. A simple restaurant, the covering, uh, that means in order to have six months cash flow, you don't have 500,000, don't even think about it. And more high class restaurant, the, the what's that called? Renovation going to be a lot. Uh, you need more than 500,000 cash on. So it is not something for the faint hearted. Please don't, don't have, um, when you have an entrepreneur mind, sometimes uh, when you see an idea, you think that this is going to make sense. Uh, you're very hot, you know, very um, garang, uh, gang ho. Uh. That is not prudent. Uh. To make a good business, you have to first know the maths behind. Then after that, think about your spending money and, you know, buying a place over or renting a place over and buying all the equipment and stuff like that. You'll be very surprised the restaurant is very expensive or the kitchen itself costs a lot to renovate. Because why? In order for a kitchen to be so-called approved by Singapore government, there's a lot of guidelines you need to follow. All the Singapore food industry guidelines. So all these industry guidelines uh, mean that it is expensive to renovate a kitchen. It's not your, your home kitchen, uh, it's a commercial kitchen. So all these things, when you factor in, by the time you discover, it may be too late. So I'm telling you this because uh, I have been there, done that. I've not opened a restaurant before, but I help customers renovate restaurant and it's very expensive. 
obscenely expensive. So it's very scary one, uh, the amount of money that gets pumped in and the amount of money that goes into the drain even before grand opening. So with that, I think I akong jangku for a lot of, a very long really. Um, if you like us, you want to engage us as your renovation contractor, right? All this sharing uh, it has not so much to do with renovation, but really things that I see offhand and I feel that sometimes it's not always need to talk about renovation because it's a bit boring sometimes. If I have new materials, I will show you. My showroom got new materials. Uh, next time we will show. Uh, next time we will show. So anyway, if you want to engage us as your renovation contractor or your interior designer, we are a multitude of all this because we draw, we design, we also do all the legwork ourselves, which is the carpentry work and the plumbing, electrical, all these are all under us. In fact, the whole design team is under us. So with that, you WhatsApp in to 9007-3368. 9007-3368. That's our WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp in and our admin will handle your inquiry. And from there, we will ask you for quite a lot of questions, like for example, your floor plan, when you plan to renovate, when you're getting your keys and all the works. Then from there, you come and see our team and we will explain to you our process and we can invite you to the sales event to see our team. So once again, the WhatsApp number 9007-3368. 9007-3368. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.